Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. I'm going to start out by showing you the basic game. I'm a little unsure by the rule book whether the objective cards apply in the basic game or not. I think you can take them out and be just fine, or you can include them in to make the game a little bit more competitive. You start out with a random tile. Any one of the tiles will be fine. It will start out as a starting tile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this. But for the most part, you're going to have two tiles that are face up, and then you're going to have a deck of tiles that will be available. You ever play Ticket to Ride? Kind of think of that. You can choose one of the two face up ones, or you can take the, one, the top of the deck card, and that will be your tile for the round. So on your turn, you have one of two actions. You can place one of these tiles to the main board, refilling the options that you have here for the next player, and then score based on the scoring, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Or you can choose one of these characters. But if you choose one of these characters, then you cannot pick a tile for the round. Then on your next turn, you will have to. So you're going to be able to choose one of these during the game. And that's going to be a huge mechanism in the game is when do I grab this? When's the best time to score this? Because it's going to be a little push and pull here with the other players on the scoring. So when you choose one of these, you take whichever one you want. You get the little meeple, and then you have to apply it right then and there, and you would place it. All of these tiles are going to coordinate to end of game scoring. I'm going to go over these in just a minute. Let me jump back over here. So when you place a tile, depending on the type of tile that you are placing, it will do different things. For the road tiles, let's say you had something maybe set up like this when you were placing your tile. For the road tiles, you're going to get one point for each road that you connect to and one point for each nature tile. So because I'm placing this one, I would get one for this for the road and one extra point for this, and I would immediately go ahead and take my two-point victory charts. For the nature ones, if you're placing these nature ones, which are either one of these forests or the ones with the fishy on it, you're going to get a point for each nature tile it's attached to, and each one of these tiles with different things on it. So let's say that this had been played in this regard. I would get, if I'm placing this, one point for this and one point for this tile with the bench. The only rule really is, is when you're placing this, you can't block a road. A road can't go to anywhere. So when you're placing it, you couldn't go like this and block off a road. The road has to keep growing until it comes to a natural conclusion. Sometimes it may be beneficial for whatever reason that you'll want to close off one of these roads as quickly as possible for strategic purposes. And that may be what you want to do to keep somebody else from scoring, and that doesn't exactly work. But I think you get the general idea. You cannot block a road. It's the only rule with that. So let's talk about the scoring. This is where things can get a little bit complicated. So whenever you take one of these, you're always going to take two of them. And when you have these, these are very easy to explain, is that whatever the fish scores, you're going to score half. So that means you're going to score for the businessman, which is the black guy, and half whatever the fish has. So if you feel like somebody's getting a lot of points, that's great. Go in and take their objective, which gives you a half points. You don't steal the half a points from them. So they score 40, you score 20, but they still score 40. That's just an example. So all of these are going to work the same way, the green ones. And these are single-sided. They will always work the same way, that when you take one, you're going to get half the points. So it's going to be a little bit of strategy involved in that, which which one of these do I take? I want to take this yellow one, but green's scoring a lot. Or maybe the cat is scoring a lot, so you want half those points because somebody else already took the cat. So that's all going to play into it. So the child, the working man, and the cat will all work the same way. When you have these and you choose the character, you will place it out. The cat will go on bushes, which you can see right here has a bush attached to it. So let's say it was on this road. Let's say that's not there. Then you would place a cat on here. At the end of the game, the cat is going to score two points for every bush connected to that road. The child is going to work the same way, except for he's going to work on playgrounds, which is right here, this little spot right here. You can see kids playing on the playground. And he's going to score two points for every playground on the road. And the working man is the last one. He's going to be on park benches because he likes to stop and read his newspaper. And you're going to score two points for each bench on your road. Whether he's on or not, he's on the road. So in this case, there's two benches, so he's going to score four points. One bush, he would score two, and he would score two. Keeping that in mind, that's the basic game. The bird is always placed on a forest tile, 
and he will score points for each forest tile that's connected. So if the game ended something like this, you would get two, four points. You're not going to score that one because it's not connected to this forest. The fish kind of works the same way. He's going to get, if this was set up like this at the end of the game, two points for each tile. That's four points. He won't score for this one because it's not part of his pond. The cyclist gets put on any road, and he gets one point for each tile on the road. So one, two, three, four. If it was something like this was set up, where there's a road one over here, he's not on that road. So one, two, three, four. He's going to score four points in this kind of setup. So that is the basic game and the basic tiles. Now it's important to note that the basic tiles are all on one side. You'll see they're very easy to see. Now at the beginning of the game, if you wanted to play the advanced version, you would flip each of these over before, you know, at the beginning of the game as part of setup, and then they're going to score a little bit differently. The advanced side is going to score a little bit differently. First thing you have to understand is the concept of regions. So a region will always be like here, divided by the roads. Think of farmers and Carcassonne or whatnot. So the roads are going to split off and create regions. So this would be a region, and perhaps that would be a region. The child, when placed in the advanced game, will score for each one in his region. So if he was placed here, there is just one playground in his region, so he will score three points for that region. If he was over here, once again, there's only three in his region, but there could potentially be more if it was like this, and he would score six points, because it's divided by a road, he would have three and six. So that's how the child is going to score. So the working man is going to work a little bit differently now. So he's going to get for every road that has a bench. So there's a bench on this road, a bench on that road, not one here, not one here, not one here. He's going to score three points, so three and six. So you want the benches to not be on a single road that's very long. You want them to split up as many possible. This would be three, six, nine. In addition, you're going to score three points if the working man is on the longest possible road. In this case, this is one, two, three tiles of road. If he was here, you would not score the bonus. If he was here, you would. And that's worth an additional three points. So the cyclist is going to score a little bit differently in the advanced game. He's going to score one point for each tile between one and six of the road he makes up and two for everything over seven. So for my reading of this, if he was on this one, he would score one, two, three points for those three tiles. And if it was longer, then he would score more, in this case, four. Now, if this row was to get longer than seven, each tile after seven would be worth two points. That's my understanding. I wasn't sure if this meant two is for everything over seven, or if it was two points for each tile over seven. We played as two points for every si over seven. The rules make no clarification. The next one is the bird. You can see it has a three point here on him, and it's probably the most complicated one. So when you get the bird, you will press him out. And then what you'll be able to do is you can move him up to seven areas. So you count the one you're on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you touch one, two, three, four forests, which you get three points for each one is 12 points. Where if you had moved here, one, the one you're on, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Couldn't quite read that. would be one, two, three times three is nine. So that's how the birds, he's going to fly over and look for trees and forests to, I don't know, live in or eat in. And that's how he's going to score his points. The fish is another one that's a little bit complicated to understand. When you get him, you're going to put him in some water. And then you will multiply the number of fish by the number of tile. Keeping in mind, the fish itself counts as one. So even though there's two on the tiles, he makes three times two. He will score six points there. If you put him over here, one, two, three, four, and he counts as one, five times two is 10. So that's how the fish is going to score. So the cat is probably the most complicated one for me to use in the score. So let me try to explain how he works. You will count the number of characters in his area. So one, two, and the cat is one. So that'd be three times the number of bushes, one, two. So that would be six, and then you would add four for a total of 10. So you take how many characters there are, one, two, three, times the number of of bushes, which is kind of like the fish, and then you add four to that total, and that's how you will score the cat. Without question, the advanced game is much harder to explain the scoring, and I highly recommend starting with the basic, at least through your first couple plays, or if you're adding somebody new to the game, I highly recommend sticking with the basic side at least once until you flip over and utilize the advanced side.